The Children of Lear. The Children of Lear is probably one of the best known stories in Irish mythology. Almost every child in Ireland is familiar with it and over the years it has inspired countless artists from famous sculptor Oshin Kelly who created the Children of Lear in the Gardens of Remembrance in Dublin. Lear was a wealthy chieftain in Ireland who married to the king's daughter Eve, who he loved with all his heart, and she bore him four children. Fenula, the eldest, A, her brother with hair like fire, and twin boys Con and Fiocra. They all lived happily in Lear's hilltop fort. But disaster struck when Eve died, and though Lear was overcome with grief, his love for his children strengthened, and he became very protective of them. He even slept in their room. Bodurg and Bob the Red, the children's grandfather, was king of the Tuhade Down, and also a druid skilled in the practice of magic. He loved his grandchildren almost as much as Lear did, and it saddened him that the children were without a mother. So he suggested to Lear to marry one of his daughters, Aoife. What nobody knew is that Aoife was secretly a witch and had been training in the dark arts of magic with her father's druids for many years. Lear and Aoife married, and while they were happy, Aoife soon became jealous of her husband's love for her children. She thought he loved them more than her, and jealousy took root in Aoife's soul, becoming black, evil, and poisoned her heart. The only solution in her mind was to get rid of the children. So one day, she said, let's go visit your grandfather. The twins squealed with delight because they loved visiting the king of the Tuhade Down. Fenula, however, became nervous because she had a dream that something had happened when they left home. She tried to go away, but Aoife insisted. On their way to the king's force, Aoife stopped the chariots so the children could pick flowers. As soon as they were out of earshot, Aoife ordered the men to kill the children. Though the men were battle-hardened warriors, they were not monsters and refused this request. Angered by their disobedience, Aoife sent them home as Lear's family continued onwards towards the king's fort, a new idea sprung into Aoife's mind. And she stopped, stopped the chariots at Lake Daravara, the Lake of Oaks, and asked the children if they would like to swim. The children jumped at the chance, ran for the water, but Fenula again was uneasy. Something in her stomach said this was a bad idea, but she followed her brothers. All the children were in the lake, and Aoife produced a magic wand and chanted a dark spell, an ancient enchantment. The spell soon drifted across the water on a wind and towards the children until it found their bodies. And they screamed as though they were on fire. They screamed as their toes became webbed, their skin sprouted quills of white feathers, their necks longened, lengthened, their mouths became bills. They had become swans. Fenula swam to the shore, finding she still could speak, and cried to Aoife, what have you done? Aoife replied, something I should have done years ago. No longer shall I share Lear's love with you. Now he will be all mine. You witch, hissed Fenula, our father will always love us, even if we're not there. Surely you can't be so cruel to leave us here forever. Aoife laughed, no, not forever, just 900 years. For the first 300, you will stay here. The next three, you shall go to the Sea of Moy, and the final three shall be in the Sea of Eris. The spell can only be broken when a king from the north marries a queen from the south and you hear the bell from a new religion ringing. But we never did anything to hurt you, screamed Fenula. Please have mercy on us. Aoife thought for a moment and then nodded. Here is my mercy. I grant you the gift of song. When you sing your music shall do nothing but be heard all over the world. It will lift the hearts of men and keep you in the company of exile. 
and with the twirl of her cloak, Aoife disappeared back to her chariot. When she arrived at her father's fort, the king asked her why she hadn't brought the children, and Aoife had a story ready. Because Lear knows how much you love his children, he thinks you'll steal them away, father. Now Boberg knew Lear well enough to know that Aoife must be lying, and he sent a servant to Lear, inviting him to visit and bring the children. When Lear received the message, he was curious. My children are already, are already there with Aoife. Aoife is there, said the messenger, but not your children. Lear knew something was up. Burburg knew something was up. And as they passed Lake Daravara, Finola sang to her father. At this sound of his daughter's voice, he stopped the horses, but only saw four swans at the edge of the lake. Then, it is me, your daughter, Finula, cried the nearest swan, and your three boys, A, Khan, and Fiacra. Lear was so shook at hearing this that he raced to the water's edge, where Finula told him what happened, and he was broken at this very sight of his four beautiful children turned into swans. Come home with me at least, he said, where I can take care of you. But Finula shook her head. The spell won't permit us to leave for 300 years. So her father lay down on the ground and wept until he heard the most beautiful music and his grief turned to joy. When he looked up, he saw his children, now the four beautiful swans singing. The children continued to sing to all the men and lulled them into a peaceful sleep. And in the morning, Lear set out for Boberg's fort to find his new wife, Aoife. When the king found out that Aoife had cast the enchantment on his children, he was enraged. Boberg produced his wand. He pointed at his daughter and lifted her up into the air like a leaf. Screaming, she was carried away into the sky, never to return. Lear and Boberg returned to the lake and spent days talking to the swans and night listening to the music. In fact, the two men never left. They set up camp at the water's edge. And over time, people heard on the wind the music of the beautiful swans. And a new fort was erected at Lake Daravara. People were cured of illness. The unhappy were cured of their pain. The swans sang along the wind and granted good health to everyone. Finula knew that in time they would have to leave. My precious brothers and I, we must leave this place tomorrow for the Sea of Moy. And that night the king and Lear had held a great banquet at the water's edge with fine food and in the morning the children flew away. We will love you forever, said Lear with tears in his eyes. You will never be forgotten until the end of time. As the sun rose over the twinkling waters of Lake Daravara, the four majestic swans took to the air, never to return. And only two old men watched them disappear into the clouds. And on that moment, the king introduced a new law, making it forbidden that any swan in Ireland would be harmed. A law of which still stands today in Ireland. The four swans flew to the Sea of Moy, a stretch of water between Ireland and Scotland, but it was much different from the lake. It was treacherous. It was hard. It was dark. Lightning would split the sky. Howling winds churned. On many occasions, they nearly lost their lives, but Fanula fought so hard to keep her brothers alive. On Carrigan Row, the rock of seals, she sheltered her brothers under her wings, waiting for spring to pass. The weather of summer and autumn was a little bit kinder, giving Lear's children more time to dwell in their loneliness, for nobody ever came here. After 300 years, their flight west was towards the Sea of Eris, where they decided to fly to their father's fort, but they were shocked to find it derelict and overgrown. The Tuhade Dawan was gone. The king had died. 
continuing onwards, they discovered the fort of their great-grandfather, the same. They found the Sea of Eris to be more tranquil than Moy, and they had shelter in many inlets and islands off the Mayo coast. And their favorite place was a lake on the island of Innes Glora, for it reminded them of Derevara. Each day, the four swans sang their melodic songs to keep away the loneliness. During this time, a new religion had been set up by St. Patrick of... The old gods had been replaced with one new one. His followers sought isolated places to pray. And one day, a holy man came to the island, the Lake of Birds, and in the reeds swam the children of Lear. They watched him build a new stone church and pray. Desperate for human company, they sang to him. He stopped. He rushed down to the water's edge and he called aloud to the children of Lear, for he had known their legend. He wasn't surprised when they spoke back to him. They told him their story, and he in turn told them his and his new god. And every day the monk prayed, worked on his church, and listened to their song. And then, while all this was going on, Leergren, the king of Connacht, went south to Munster, to marry a princess. And of course the children of Lear didn't know this, nor did they know that Aoife's prophecy had been fulfilled. The spell will only be broken when a king of the north marries a queen of the south. And when you hear the bell of a new religion singing. And there, on that very day that the king of the north married the queen of the south, the priest had finished building his church on the lake of birds. And then, he rang a large bronze bell. A strange sound rippled over the water, bringing a curious change to the swans. They felt their skin tighten, their feathers fall. The boys panicked, but Fanula knew what was happening. After 900 years, the spell was broken. Quickly on the land, she told her brothers, and by the time the swans reached the water, they were no longer webbed, but they were no longer children. Four ancient looking people stood before the monk. After 900 years, the children of Lear were no longer children. They were frail and lay on the ground. They had no energy left. The monk rushed over to them, knelt beside Fanula, 